Stuart Head. Good morning. Welcome. Fáil tí Kalash na Hulscála Corcí. I met some of you very recently in your school, so it's very nice to see you again. Um, and for those of you who haven't been here in UCC, I'm sure many of you have. You're fantastically welcome. Can I also welcome the teachers? Uh, these are only possible because teachers step up and thank you for the opportunity uh, to invite you, but also your students. It's really important to us that we have that kind of engagement. And at the end of the day, if we don't have great teachers, we don't have great students. Um, so it's exciting for me today. Um, Tom and the team have done a fantastic job um, in, in trying to, to, I suppose, really identify a really important issue. And if you, I know most of you don't watch television, probably you watch Netflix. Uh, well, uh, let me ask, how many people watch the news on RT, on television? Just curious. There we are. How many of you watch Netflix? See, we should put the news on Netflix. I mean, I think that's really interesting. Um, and, you know, the, so there's a real challenge for us in the university education, but also in terms of communication. Um, so last night on the news, because most of you weren't watching it, uh, Facebook announced that they were putting in all these various new algorithms to detect uh, photographs of people um, and pretty awful photographs that can sometimes be uh, cast around the, the internet and various parts of the social network. Um, so I think there's a really interesting challenge here, and one of the challenges that Barry, who will speak later, and Tom and I and the, and the university team um, are constantly trying to do is not just actually protect us from those kinds of intrusions or insecurity issues, but also trying to bridge the gap between people like me who have gray hairs and, and young people like you who actually have grown up with nothing other than digital devices. And I suppose the message really is, is that we are trying, all of us, and I include myself, all of us, to try and navigate this really complex opportunity of technology that's really important, but actually also brings risks. Uh, risks for individual, risks for institutions, whether that's reputation, or your own personal uh, integrity and reputation. And there are much more talented people here today who will speak about that. What I'd like to do is just spend a few minutes just making some general remarks, which I think are really important in the overall technology space. Um, there's a group of wise people, if you want to call them that, called the or Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. And last year, last summer, they made a pronouncement, and I think there's evidence of this, that 65% of young people, that's you, will work in jobs that don't even exist today. So 65% of you are going to work in jobs that actually don't even exist. You know, and for those of us who have been around a while, actually have seen such transformation in the workplace through technology, it's been absolutely phenomenal. And that doesn't mean things like medicine and dentistry and teaching and all those things don't exist, but they also are changing enormously um, in, in the use of technology. And the technology that you are using today, and I, I'm, I'm delighted that Tom said, please use your technology today um, in terms of your engagement. As I say, not to be browsing YouTube and all that stuff, but actually use it to communicate some of the issues that we're talking about today. So what we really have to be doing is open to seeing jobs that we've known for many, many years being replaced and actually maybe disappearing. Um, you know, some people say the unthinkable is beginning to happen, uh, and more frequently. Um, there's a song when, when I was growing up saying, clowns on the left of us, fools to the right, or jokers to the right. Um, we could say that today. Um, we've got Brexit happening on the right, and you might say, well, how is that going to impact on you? It might, or it might not, actually. Um, and then we've Donald Trump on the other side. Um, might that impact us? It will. I think all of these things will. But I was at a lecture last night um, from a, a bunch of economics, and they said, um, and again, you're all too young to remember this. How did I about to say this? They said, in, well, let me, anybody in the room, beside, any student in the room who was born before 2000, I doubt it, actually, won. So there was this phenomenon in 2000 that we had Y2000, and everybody got all excited that the world was going to stop because all the digital numbers were ca characterized in certain ways, and planes would fall out of the sky, and nothing really happened, actually. So there is a view by some economists that Brexit will be kind of like that. I don't know. But what is sure, what is certain, is that the world is changing, and, and technology is going to play a critical role in that. So we can either wait for it to happen, or we can be the person who shapes it. This is your future, and we want you to shape it, and we want you to participate fully in that. So we're calling this the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, the first industrial revolution was water, steam, power. The second, electric power. The third was electronic and information technology. And the, the fourth, of course, now is the digital age. And we're really proud in UCC because George Boole, our first professor of mathematics, wrote the algorithms for computers, the very first algorithms that were subsequently developed for computing. So the fourth industrial revolution is not going to be a continuation of the third. 
It's different, it's distinctive, in the speed of which its scope and the impacts are impacting on our lives. And we were, I was with some colleagues last night from the University of Massachusetts, and we're kind of comparing how the world has changed. Um, and the, the, the high for me a few years ago in, t in terms of technology, that's, I was on a train to Dublin, and a friend of mine from work rang me on a train to, he was on a train between Beijing and Shanghai. And I thought that the notion that you could talk to somebody on a phone between two trains moving across the world, and I know you laugh at that because you, know, you do all fast of sophisticated things, but that's the speed at which things have changed, actually. And you can communicate instantly. And with that, of course, comes risks, and that's what you're going to hear about today. So the possibility of billions of people connected by mobile devices is unprecedented. Power, storage, capacity, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, the Internet of Things. My view of the world in the future is that when you go in to buy a pair of shoes, let me give you an example, for example, that you won't see loads of shoes in front of you. You see catalogues. <coughs> then you pick out those really nice runners that you have there, or you pick out the really fancy shoes that are over here on the catalogue, and then the guy will, our lady will go, okay, can you come back in 10 minutes? Um, and they have a 3D printer there, and it's going to print your, your shoes for you. So that'll get rid of all the logistics, it'll get rid of all the, the size 14s and the size 2s that are never used. So the world is changing phenomenally. And if you don't believe me, um, I, was at, I, teach, I judge the, the, the young scientist, um, and I've done for some years, and what, one guy came up to me and he said, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? And I said, I will, and he said, let me make you the cup. And he had a 3D printer there, and 10 minutes later, here's the cup, and I drank coffee out of it. So when you buy your fancy shoes in the future, it'll be a 3D printer that produces them for you. And what I'm trying to show you is that the possibilities are boundless. And if I say to you that the largest taxi company in the world, Uber, owns no cars. The world's most popular media owner, Facebook, produces no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. Airbnb, where people stay across the world, owns no property. So that's perhaps the lens that you begin to see the world through technology into the future. And I see Maureen Griffin at the back, so welcome Maureen, and I know Maureen will say some really fantastic things later about some dimensions of this. Um, so at the end of the day, look, we all exist in an online world. It's not going to change. We're not going to hold back the tide. I understand 87% of Irish households now have internet connections. 92% of 16 to 29 year olds have access to the, to the internet um, on a regular basis. And there are huge opportunities. I'm just kind of, I know there's a kind of a generation gap thing here, but actually if you think about Brexit, one of the real challenges that the Irish government is facing, and us as a community, is if there's going to be a border. You've heard about hard borders, is that something you've heard about yet? Why don't we be imaginative? And there is a view, actually, we don't need a hard border. The view is that if we use the internet of things, which are sensors, devices, and technology, and you put a sensor on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a container coming across the border, and that can go through Britain, and we can track it along the way using the internet of things, a very low frequency, free frequency, and we can actually have a, a virtual border. And I'm almost certain that's what's going to happen. So what I want you to do today is to look imaginatively at the kinds of things technology can do for you. You are talented young people, but always remember, with talent comes responsibility. Responsibility for yourself, responsibility for your family, for your community. So use the technology in a way that will benefit others, not just yourself. So I was delighted to hear what Tom said. One of the outcomes for you to get your digital badge is that you have to share. Because with, also with responsibility is a leadership role. And I'd like each of you to go back to your schools and share in some way the experience today and share with others so that something special can happen. So today is about starting a conversation, a conversation about, with young people, with you and listening to you in terms of your online personas. How we need to behave online. How might we ensure that the internet have its fullest potential safely and securely? And I'm delighted that the fantastic speakers we have here today because we want to learn a great deal from each other, but particularly from our speakers. So finally, can I say thanks to Tom and Maya and the team and all our students 
uh, ambassadors at the back, which have been fantastic. The National Forum for, for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning for our funding. But more importantly, thank you, each of you, for coming today. I hope we see you all very, very soon back in UCC. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.